So here I'm going to talk about what I call the system of the DDAA model. Now the DDAA model in international macroeconomics has basically two curves, one for the goods market, one for the asset markets. It's on a single uh, two-dimensional graph, but the system shows the underlying markets that make up these curves. And so elsewhere I show that the DD curve is derived from the goods market equilibrium, AA is from the asset market equilibrium, and once we derive it, we don't look at it again. But here we can actually keep the DD, the aggregate expenditure market or the, the goods market, and then we can also keep the asset market as well along the side, and then we can see how curves respond in a little bit more complicated way. It helps us think about what's going on behind the scenes, it helps us think about um, what's really going on as we shift the curve. So we can shift one curve, get our answer, but then the movement along the curve can be drawn in the market that we're not shifting. Okay, so. That's kind of what we're doing. I've got an associated graph in the handouts and the, the notes that I give, and this kind of walks through that. All right, so just to recap, um, the DDA model has two curves. One represents equilibrium in the goods market, and one represents equilibrium in the assets market, and then the asset market is also derived from the money market. All right, so there's, it's, it's two markets together. Um, the DD curve is derived from the aggregate expenditure model or the Keynesian cross. The IRP model, I call it interest rate parity. Other people call it the asset market. This, this derives the AA curve. All right, so uh, we're gonna actually leave those uh, above and to the side from our DDA model. We can see what's really going on in the markets as we shift the curves. All right, I'm gonna do that to do two things. First, I'm gonna do the fiscal expansion I've walked through before, but that originates in the goods market because government expenditure is going to increase. And then that, that will shift DD and we'll, we'll get our final answer. But then we can actually see what follows as we shift along the AA curve as the money and asset markets follow. So we got so, sort of a leader and a follower. And uh, this is the uh, goods market uh, increase is going to appreciate the currency, it's going to make E decrease. And then we'll see that second effect. Um, monetary expansion originates in the money and asset markets. That causes a depreciation of the currency, which affects the goods market through exports and imports. Right, And so basically, the, you can move along the DD curve after you shift the AA curve. And so this is the handout that I give out. I'm going to start with a fiscal expansion. Notice that in the Keynesian cross, I list what shifts AE. Right? So you've got disposable income, which is income minus taxes. So you could have a tax cut as well. Government spending increase, increase in some types of investment, usually the ones that are not determined by the interest rate, but some sort of autonomous investment. And then Q, which is the real exchange rate here. Okay. And then that's going to be important because a shift in E is going to actually make us get this shift over here. Right now, um, down here, the only thing that really affects uh, money market are money supply and prices, and I'm not going to do prices because I'm not doing the long run. So when I do monetary expansion, we're going to have money supply down here. Right, so here's equilibrium in the goods market, giving us a single Y, so it's the same Y on the DDA curve. Equilibrium in the asset market gives us E, and again, these are all crossing, they're all in equilibrium. All right, down here is the money market, um, and here's income, which is going to be important for shifting money demand, and then that's going to change everything as well. So here is uh, the system of equations, goods market, money market, asset market, leading to simul simultaneous equilibrium in goods and asset markets, and here's our starting equilibrium combination of the exchange rate and output. So when I do a fiscal expansion, I'm going to have an increase in government spending, and that's going to shift aggregate expenditure up, leading to a new equilibrium point up here, right, at a new output. Remember, the vertical distance is less than the horizontal distance because that is the multiplier effect. Right, so here's our new output, and it's going to be the same output here, and that can be drawn as an expansion or a rightward shift in the DD curve. Right? So here is our new answer. Right? This new point has a stronger currency, he's lower, but it's appreciated, and a higher output level. And that's what you'd expect a fiscal expansion to do. Now, we're not done, and that's why we're actually showing this market over here, is because we're going to have to move from here to here along the AA curve without shifting it. Well, how you can do that is you can say, well, first of all, we need a stronger exchange rate, so we're going to need a higher rate of return at home, okay? And so that's going to be the new equilibrium in the asset market. How is that restored? Well, that's going to be done in the money market. So all else equal, we are going to shift income down here. Remember, fiscal expansions raise GDP, and now we're going to raise GDP here and get a increase in income, increase in money demand, and now money markets in equilibrium, asset markets in equilibrium, 
goods market is equilibrium. All all equilibria are restored at this new point. Okay, and so uh, just just to think about how we we did this is that we derived the asset market elsewhere. We basically shifted income around and got different points on the on the AA curve. Okay, that's how we got the AA curve. Change income, get a different exchange rate. Do that a couple of times and connect the dots. Well, here we're just looking at two of those dots, right? So when we shift government expenditure, that's anything that's not the exchange rate shifts the curve, all right? So government expenditure is going to shift the whole DD curve, all right? But then, then this ch change in exchange rate is going to cause a response that's going to be movement along the curve. Right? And so increase in government spending, shift the DD curve, and now move along the curve because of the increase in income. Right? Increase in income raises interest rates, raises rate of return, and then you get a new point on the AA curve. Now, money, monetary, um, excuse me, the money market is going to shift AA first. Okay? And that's going to originate, obviously, in the money market. So an increase in money supply here is going to be, remember, this is zero, so it's going to be an increase. And now we have a new equilibrium point. And remember that an increase in the money supply lowers interest rates. And because this rate of return, the expected rate of return at home, is the interest rate, which is simply straight up from this crossing point here. And it is a lower rate of return because it is a lower interest rate. Now, if you look at the new crossing point, this will weaken the currency. So this is a stronger foreign currency, weaker home currency. And uh, you can see here that this is, this is the new exchange rate that goes along with it. Right? Now, again, you could just work with this model only, and that's kind of what you're expected to do. And you say monetary expansion shifts AA to the right, weakens the currency, and boosts output. That's the expected answer. All right? But now we can see how we got there. Increase the money supply, lower the interest rate, lower the rate of return. This new equilibrium point is the new exchange rate here. Okay, so that's your AA shift. What we have to do also is we're going to have to say, well, how do we move along the DD curve? Okay, so that's going to be two different points in the goods market. Remember, we drew this goods market changing E, getting different exports, getting different output levels. Now we're going to pick two of those points. And so to get from here to here, we look, we say, well, the exchange rate's weaker. That is going to boost exports, cut imports. It's going to boost aggregate expenditure through the foreign sector. So to do that, we see, well, we're going to have to reach this new equilibrium output level here. All right, so here's our original equilibrium point. Here's our new equilibrium point, and we get equilibrium in the goods market by shifting AE up. Okay, and so the weaker currency leads to more spending on uh, exports and less on imports, and net exports are going to increase. Right? So we started with an increase in the money market, lowering rates, lowering the rate of return at home. That can be drawn as a monetary expansion shifting AA to the right, and then we say, well, we move from point the first point to the second point on the DD curve because the weaker exchange rate boosts output. And where we wind up, like we wind up on both of these markets, is simultaneous equilibrium in the goods, asset, and money market all together. All of these are crossing points again, and that is represented by this curve. So the simple way is just to move DDAA, but this helps us to think about how we shifted AA in the first place, and then how we get to the new point on DD, and how we started in one equilibrium and we got to a new equilibrium, and then all these points represent equilibrium in the market, and we're at a new simultaneous equilibrium in the goods market and the asset market, as well as the money market.